Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Tuesday, August 27th. Market, I guess you call it flat today. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, we got, I mean, tomorrow's a Social Security payment. We got the uh, first of the month payments coming out on August 30th, which is Friday. We have NVIDIA results coming out tomorrow. So most likely we're going to see a big impulse or a spike higher over the next several days. It's just the way it is. A lot of people here are upset because I said, you know, I've been painting this kind of bearish scenario and it's not happening like right now. And they're upset and they, they blame me and, and they say, I don't know what I'm doing. And you know, every, <laughs> you're allowed to say, I guess, whatever you want. But I paint a macro picture I did not think we were going to get, it's true, I didn't think we were going to get a V-shaped recovery on this because the economy is slowing down. I'm sticking to my guns. I'm telling you what's going to happen. We're going to come back. We're going to revisit all of this. If it doesn't work for you, that it doesn't happen immediately, like boom, 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 tomorrow, the next day, this week, then, you know, I'm sorry. You could find another approach, but this is my approach. It's a macro approach. And just like I said back in October 2022, that the rate hikes were going to translate into all time record highs in stocks and a strong economy, which panned out. And it didn't seem that way at the time, folks. I mean, let's be honest. Um, it's the same thing now. So I'm not going to sit here and try to defend. I just here's the thing. Here's the thing that I want to uh, I wanted to mention. I was thinking about this yesterday, actually. Um, intelligent people learn how to process information, and that there's a big difference between processing information and uh, acting kind of like on rote on on, on memorization. I'll give you an example, like you know when you went to school. In math class, the teacher showed you how to solve a problem, a particular problem. Here's how you do it. Here's how you look at it. Here's how you solve it. Then you get new problems thrown at you, but you have to use that understanding, okay? It's not like you memorize this problem, then here is another problem, you memorize that, and there's just kind of like a finite set of problems and you know how to do each one because you memorize it no you have one problem the teacher explains to you how to solve that problem and you process that information to be able to solve other problems okay so basically what i do here what i try to do here i don't know how successful i am by the way let me interrupt please like and subscribe Thank you, everybody who has been doing that. The number of subscriptions have been going way up. It helps the channel. It helps all of us. Please like and subscribe if you've already done that. Thank you. If you haven't, please hit the, uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Thank you very much. So what I try to do here is impart an education, an understanding. You have to process. This is why I've always said in the past, like people say, well, let me see your track record. It doesn't matter what, in my track record, if every single trade I made was a profit, and I showed you that, you would not be able to, rep now, I'm not saying that that's true, but I'm just saying you would not be able to replicate that because I am an individual, you are an individual, we're, de we're both, emotionally different in, in, in at least to some extent and so we're going to behave and react even if it's a subtle difference in behavior or reaction there's going to be a difference okay and by the same token i may have all losses but that doesn't mean my information is bad it just means like i have things inside of me behaviorally which are sabotaging the good information that I have, all right? So I don't believe in like, let me see your track record because you can't, you can't emulate that, you can't replicate that. What, what is important 
And I hope you guys understand this. I know a lot of you, maybe not a lot, but some of you are going to say, you know, you're, you're just going to laugh it off. It's about processing that information. It's about, look, I, I, I aim to educate. I aim to explain things. And then it's up to you to take that understanding and apply it in the context of, of you as a person with your own behavior, hopefully in control of that behavior, unemotionally, et cetera, et cetera. If I say buy this, sell this, buy this, sell this right now, now sell this right, you know, like that's just not gonna work out. That's not processing information. That's like, you know, having some, uh, some sort of rote approach to investing and it's just not gonna work out. So anyway, I wanted to say that. It's about processing information. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, basically, you know, we know what's going on right now. There is uh, a Fed rate cut that is coming up on September 18th. We have the peak in the fiscal flows. I've been saying we have the peak in the fiscal flow cycle that are hap is happening right now. I said it was happening from August 15th until September 2nd where it is peaking out. We're gonna get um, the first of the month payments, like I said, on Friday. Then we're gonna get a tax drain on September 15th. Then we're gonna get an, um, a uh, rate cut on September 18th. Next week, next Friday, we're gonna get the, imp the jobs report for August. And like now, the Fed, Powell, basically in, in his speech at Jackson Hole, he kind of um, put out the scenario that if we see any kind of wobbling in the labor market, we're going to move aggressively. So everybody, even though right now Fed fund futures are pricing in only a 25 basis point rate cut, everybody's going to be looking at that number next Friday. And if it's a weak job report, uh, you know, then we're gonna be pricing in a 50 basis point rate cut. Now, understand something. All of this pricing in, all of this uh, bullish reaction to these rate cuts, this is prior to or before everything that I've been talking about. I've been saying that when the rate cuts happen, when the rate cuts happen, they will equate to the beginning of a drain of the interest income transfers that the economy has been experiencing, that the economy has been benefiting from over the last two and a half years, okay? So like everything now, you could say, yeah, I'm early on this, all right? We haven't had any rate cuts yet. All these things, and I'm telling you right now, I know a lot of you, you're just gonna, you're going to laugh this off. You're going to say whatever. But we're going to come back and we're going to revisit this. I'm telling you right now. So be prepared. In a year, in 18 months, we're going to come back and revisit this. And it's going to be like shocking the degree to which the environment has changed. And I'm not saying in a bullish way. I'm sticking to my guns on that. And it's not, you know, because I've become like perma bearish. It's because I look forward. I look ahead. I look at developing conditions. You know, a lot of times I've used the analogy of the, the mariner on the open seas. Looking at his charts. Looking at weather patterns out there. Where he's going. Where it's going to be. What is the environment when he gets to a certain place? Will he have to change course? Will he encounter, you know, danger or rough weather or rough sailing? This is what I'm telling you. I'm not sitting here, today's a beautiful day and tomorrow's a beautiful, that's great, that's wonderful. Does that really help? Does that really help? I mean, for me, what really helps is that, uh, you know, to, to project or to understand what the forward outlook looks like, all right? Because then we can, we can position, 
We can position and hold and we can build. We can build a portfolio. We can build a strategy. We can implement a strategy. I talked about next year. We don't know who's going to win the election. I just saw a thing today that Kamala Harris, uh, her tax plan is to cut taxes by $4 trillion, but to raise taxes by $5 trillion. <laughs> So what all that is, is net increased taxation of a trillion. Now, we don't know her spending plans. It may very well be that, you know, spending will be above net taxation. In that case, we'll have like a positive flow. We don't know how much of a positive flow, but all these things factor in. So like, am I sitting here looking at this micro little one day, two day thing? No, I'm, I'm already out, folks. I'm already out into 2025, at least partially. At least I know certain things that are gonna happen in 2025, like I've been telling you about. We're gonna have rate cuts, which are gonna be uh, essentially siphoning off those interest income transfers that we've had over the last two and a half years. We're going to have smaller increases in Social Security, the cost of living increases for Social Security and those uh, programs. OK, we're going to have the expiration of the Trump tax cuts unless that is uh, extended. We don't know that has to do with the election and who gets elected. So what we know right now is at least three things coming up next year that are uh, equate to a higher degree of fiscal drag. OK, and that fiscal drag may even get much worse depending on who gets elected and what the policies are. So, yeah, you could critique me and you could attack me and say you said the market was going to go down and it didn't go down yet. And ha ha ha. That's fine. All right. You, you got the right to do that. But I'm just telling you, I'm looking at two already. I'm into 2025. I'm just waiting for one thing to get resolved, which is the election. I'm already into 2025 and I'm positioning myself for 2025. I don't mess around with these daily swings. I mean, a lot of times I don't even pay attention and I encourage people not to pay attention because it's basically just noise. And we know where the noise is coming from right now. It's coming from these people, these monetarist people who have been dying for the last two and a half years, not in the market, waiting for this to happen, to finally jump in. Think about that for a second. They've been out. They've been waiting for this for two and a half years. They're first now starting to get in. I mean, wild horses couldn't keep me really from betting against that, especially when I know certain other developments that are about to happen. Think about it. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Don't forget to go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial at MMT Trader. And by the way, if you have any suggestions or recommendations about how I can make these videos better, and it could be visually, it could be incorporating things into it, you know, graphics or whatever, I just do this by myself. I don't have a video, obviously, right? I don't have a videographer. I don't, you know, I just, I do this as, as a courtesy, basically. But if you have suggestions, please feel free to post them up in the comments. And um, everybody, be civil, okay? No need to criticize. Just constructive criticizing, criticism, and be civil. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Bye.